off the floor. We're going to have seven different speakers today that will be giving short statements. Uh, following that, we will go ahead and give you some information about some of the key protesters in our profiles, which you will find in your press packet. I'd like to draw your attention to that. So those people are here on the end, and as they can also you can ask them questions or go back afterwards and speak to them directly. International Answer denounces the attacks on protesters by the police and the demonization of peaceful dissent by the media. The media and the police have exaggerated the extremely small, isolated incidents of violence, as well as the economic cost of having protesters in the streets. It is understandable, just, and necessary that people voice their opposition to this sick, unjust war for oil. This is a war of aggression and conquest. This is not a war of liberation. People in city after city have spoken with their voices and their bodies. After months of orderly protest, it has now become necessary to cross the line and take to the next step of action to let our government know that this war is not in our name. It's a radical network of people who have come together as concerned citizens and affinity groups to stop the war. The $75 billion that George Bush is asking for to fund the first month of this war is the tip of the iceberg, which is robbing the future of the citizens of this country. Stealing from Social Security, from Medicare, from the education, health care, arts funding, and every kind of social service that will make us strong, that will support democracy, and that will inspire the world. Over the last two days, our Police Watch Project has received over 50 calls from people who have peacefully protested the U.S. policy of war. The callers recounted vivid stories of police misconduct and its actions toward the protesters. Through these stories, we've learned that the SFPD has broken its own general orders regarding crowd control and through intimidation, effectively blocked people from practicing their constitutional right to peaceful assembly and free speech. It's San Francisco is probably the most anti-war city in the country. They're the ones people here are getting disrupted the most. How do you answer back to, to throwing good money after bad? and all the people you're disrupting because of this, who probably feel the same way you do. The amount of money that's being spent in San Francisco on the overzealous police and their actions on the streets is a drop in the bucket to the amount of money that they are spending on this unjust, immoral war against the people of Iraq and the people of Israel. We feel very strongly, and I speak as a citizen of this country, I speak as someone who was raised in San Francisco, and I speak as someone who works with children, and someone who also is an activist in this movement. We are very concerned with the fact that the government has not listened to the numerous ways that we have attempted to communicate our outrage and our frustration against the actions of this government. We are concerned with the amount of money that he is requesting right now to continue forward with the war on Iraq and the war on the services for people who are going to lose health care services. I mean, that's the hard reality, and that money is not going to come back to the city from the federal government, no matter how much you throw You're down. absolutely right, and the amount of money that was spent in the last couple days by San Francisco and the Bay Area in regards to the actions of the people taking up to the streets has nothing to do with the cuts right. and the layoffs in the education system, in the health care system, in the libraries, in the schools. Those cuts have been on the books and in the works for a long time. And if we want to address the issues of the people of our communities and the issues of the people of San Francisco and the children and the youth and the poor and the working class, then we need to actually step back and take a look at those issues separately from what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about the people of Iraq and the death that we are about to see coming down the pike on the people of that country. I am concerned about how the media has framed the issue over the costs of protests. I want the department, the police department, um, to explain what their protocol is in uh, dealing with demonstrations that we've seen in the last few days. I would be interested in hearing their um, explanation for why peaceful protesters have been arrested, and I want a discussion about the costs of doing that and engaging in that kind of activity. And I think that while we as a city have to confront the fact that protests do cost money, 
uh, we should be looking at what the true costs are, not the inflated costs, the exaggerated costs, uh, the essentially made costs that didn't have to be there. In uh, Supervisor Hall's resolution that he's proposing today, he points out that when we have the St. Patrick's Day Parade, New Year's Day Parade, those organizations pay to shut down the street. For example, on Thursday, you did shut down the streets. Would this organization be prepared to pay for that? It seems there's a lot of money going into the effort as it is. To compare St. Patrick's Day to a global uprising against an unjust and racist war is so ridiculous. I don't want to respond. Thank you.